Welcome to FX Options University, recorded live at the International Securities Exchange, the world's largest equity options exchange. Join the industry's top trading professionals as they provide insight and strategies for trading in the currency markets using FX options. FX options are a low-risk alternative to hedging currency moves in any market condition. Now, obviously, the, the debate is still out there and, and will probably inevitably be out there as far as which type of analysis is better, fundamental or technical. Um, and to be quite honest, you know, both of them have their merits and both of them have their disadvantages. Uh, but in terms of the way that we like to trade here at Big Trends, quantifying those big trends and quantifying some of those momentum moves, it's a lot easier from our standpoint to point those type of trade scenarios out through technical analysis rather than using the fundamental analysis. So that's why we'll go through some indicators and some charts here. And that really allows me to have the accuracy and consistency that I'm looking for which ultimately leads to that profitability. So in terms of accuracy, what are we talking about? Well, to be accurate, you need to clearly identify the trend. And that can be a bullish trend, it can be a bearish trend. Sometimes there's no trend at all, and that's just as useful to have that information to know when you're in a trending environment or when you're in a range-bound market. So in terms of accuracy, we want to be able to quickly and easily identify the trend. And taking it one step further, not just knowing whether that is bullish, bearish, or neutral, but also giving us some sort of an idea of how strong that particular trend is, quantifying the strength. Because obviously, at big trends, we only want to be involved with the biggest and best trends. Not just a trending environment, but an efficient trending environment. And in, as far as consistency, it's just managing the trend. You know, making sure that you fully understand in the process before you even enter into the trade, because you have your process so clearly defined, you always want to know when you're going to enter and when you're going to exit that particular trend. And we'll show you how to not be greedy during that process. And really, if you can hone that in, um, you don't have to get in on a bullish trend at the absolute bottom and get out at the absolute top. If you can consistently catch just a good chunk of that move, you don't have to catch all of it. Um, just by catching a portion of it, that'll lead you towards the profitability that, that we're all looking for. And then finally, one thing that you always have to keep in mind is you never should find yourself being in a trade, taking a look at the change in your account balance based upon that trade, looking at the chart and asking yourself, what should I do now? You need to have a plan in place based upon your education, based upon your strategies that you use, be that technical or fundamental analysis, as I mentioned, I tend to lead more to the technical side, but you, you always want to have that plan. So you want to, as the saying goes, plan your trade and then trade your plan. So you want to stick with that. And then after the trade, you can always go back and review and say what worked and what didn't. But when you're in the trade, you never want to ask yourself, what should I do now? You always want to have that planned out ahead of time so that you know what you're doing there. Now, obviously, all of us who are here today have a strong focus on education and really believe that education is important. So I don't want to spend too much time on this here, but I want to quickly point out just how you're distinguishing yourself from your fellow traders. As we know, options trading, even FX options trading, because it's, it's ultimately options trading at the end of the day, it's just focused on a, a different type of asset class. As an options trader, it is a zero-sum game that we're playing. So there's going to be winners and there's going to be losers because there's two sides uh, to a trade. So you have to have an edge over your competition if you ultimately want to be profitable because it's not a game where multiple people can win. There's only two sides to a contract. You're on one, somebody else is on the other, and one of the two is going to win. So traders without a plan or who might be new to the market, and all of us have done this at some point in time, whether we want to admit it or not, but they typically have larger losses, which ultimately kills your profitability because you're not making money. You're losing more than you're making, obviously. So you have a lower chance of success because you don't have that plan or you don't have the necessary foundation, as this triangle points out to us here, that we're looking for. Next is experienced traders. Notice that I say experienced and not necessarily educated. There's a lot of people who spend a lot of time cutting their teeth in the markets, and they're very experienced. And they understand how it works, but they still really don't have a quantifiable edge where they can ask themselves, you know, what, what do I do better than my competition out there in the markets? 
And that's why at Big Trends we really focus on those trending environments because we feel like we can point out the really strong, efficient trends uh, better than the majority of people out there. So we can identify them early enough to get on the trade and make money before everybody starts to pile on and, and it reaches a, a, a top or a bottom um, right at the time that everybody really starts to pile on and everybody gets shaken out. So the experienced trader knows how to trade, but they're lacking that consistency. And obviously we just talked about consistency. So once you add that consistency in, you reach the top of the pyramid uh, where you are consistently profitable. So what are some of the, the strategies that I use uh, to achieve consistency in options trading in general? Uh, but more specific as we're talking about here um, with the, uh, the ISEFX options. Well, first of all, I like to focus on buying in the money options. The whole goal of buying in the, in the money options for me is to limit the amount of time premium that I'm, I'm paying, or, or said another way, limiting the amount of time I have for my particular position. Um, obviously, the majority of options that are out there expire worthless. However, they can expire worthless if they're in the money. They're going to intrinsic value. The other advantage that I like to throw out there of buying in the money options is from there, when you don't have much time premium that you're paying up for, you can really take time and, and ultimately focus on just the, the price of a particular security, in this case of that particular uh, currency index. My rule of thumb, and you can go ahead and, and jot this down on your, your piece of paper that you want to be, that, aqua, or that, that light blue color might be a little hard for you to, to, uh, to read there, but ultimately I, I would like to, when I look at an option, I want to have at least 60% or 66%, so two-thirds um, of the price of that option, I would like to see that be intrinsic value. So in terms of time premium, I'm only willing to pay 33% um, of time premium there. Um, so that really gives me my edge and lets me know that the, you know, the vast majority of that value that I'm paying for that particular option is for the intrinsic value. Obviously, then you're going to have a higher delta as well. Now, sometimes you're going to have to pay up for that in the money option, but you have the higher delta. So as the particular move in your direction takes place, you're going to be able to make money a lot faster. I also like to make sure to buy myself plenty of time when I'm trading options. Um, and I say longer term options, everybody has their own style. Um, I'm not a day trader. In particular, I'm not a day trader when it comes to FX options. Every now and then I'll, I'll day trade a, a stock here or there, or, or maybe even um, when uh, the market's moving significantly uh, one way or the other. Um, I might even jump on some of the, the leverage ETFs. But as you'll see here, in terms of a, a trending environment, these securities or these currencies um, are really smooth and longer trending. So I want to make sure I buy enough time up front because I'm not somebody that wants to roll my options um, or have to, you know, exit a trade and then maybe on down the road, um, you know, buy into a different strike price or buy into a different month. Um, I like to go ahead and plan the trade up front and then stay with the trade as long as the trend is still there. And then once the trend is, is no longer there, I like to go ahead and exit. Thank you for participating in this week's session. Please join us again next week. Get trading ideas, exchange rates, webinars, news, and commentary. Visit www.fxoptions.com. ISE FX Options can be easily traded through all options-enabled brokerage accounts. These exchange-listed securities are cash-settled in U.S. dollars and have a European-style exercise.